This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shishina Roll. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news, Bahamas Junk New Carnival to become a big marketing tool for this destination. The festival that closed out on Saturday has been termed a huge success and organizers say it has certainly de delivered an economic boost. Italia Hall has that, our top story. Consultant Ginger Moxie says a whole lot of work went into preparing for the Bahamas Junk New Carnival on Grand Bahama. Nonetheless, she says partners were eager to pull together for the two-day event. More than 16,000 persons attended the festival this time around, and Moxie is satisfied that the event had a huge impact on the island's economy. We are so overjoyed by the response of the tourists, the response of the Grand Bahama community, the response of those throughout the Bahamas who came to support the kickoff weekend. And in spite of all of that rain, we had such uh, an overwhelming support of the weekend of activity. She notes that this event attracts the right clientele to the island. We had over 70 travel agents that came to this island for Bahamas Junk New Carnival who are now going to be speaking about their experience throughout the world. We had, um, we had so many tourists. We had, we had people that came actually last year, that came back this year, and that are communicating throughout their networks on what a wonderful experience they had. And as for the festival overall, well, Moxie says it was a big success. They want us to have events that go on throughout the year leading up to Bahamas Junk New Carnival. And so for, for Grand Bahama Island, the impact again was tremendous in terms of how the people benefited, how businesses benefited, how the vendors benefited, the tourism um, um, vendors, and the hotels, the, the, the car rental companies mm -hmm. there, the impact again was, was overwhelming. Moxie says this event serves as a platform for Grand Bahamas tourism industry and it's only expected to grow from here. It's, it's going to, to get bigger and better. Um, you have a lot of companies again that are also coming on board to say they want to be a part of, of what we're doing because it's so it's so special, it's so unique. And so even the night of, I had, um, I had someone come up to me from one of the major companies on the island. He said, listen here, you, we need to be involved. We want to be a part of this because this is so great for our island. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. While well, a big religious tourism conference is underway at the Pelican Bay Resort, the conclave focusing on a major issue facing Grand Bahama, the possible extension of certain provisions of the Hawksville Creek Agreement and the implications for this destination. Megan Shepard was there. The Global Unity Conference officially opening Thursday morning at the Pelican Bay Resort. President of the Boardroom Performance Group, Larry Cabaldon, has been on island for a few days and says he's had an opportunity to speak with residents and business persons about their concerns, specifically the Hawksville Creek Agreement. Pastor Eddie Victor says he believes this three-day conference will be one to make a major impact on the island. The big issue is how do we uh, all work together to achieve value for everybody because you know there's a tendency for all of us to be in our little silos and we're trying to drive our own self-interest and if you can appeal to the nobler instincts and in people and at the same time make sure that they're listened to and so you know we're not going to overtax or overburden or do anything to uh, adversely affect and then you call them together to all contribute and they have to give a little in order to contribute for the for the general good we believe that um in how this program has been laid out for the next um, couple days uh, is going to really, really help to um, get people thinking differently, functioning differently, and for greater leadership skills to, to, to be demonstrated. President of the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce, Kevin Seymour, presenting on the issue of the exemptions in the Hawksville Creek Agreement. He says the business community is hopeful that the government will make an announcement to give certainty as to where affairs are headed. He also spoke on the business climate here on Grants Bahama. The industrial sector has been chugging along fairly, fairly well. Um, the touristic sector hasn't been uh, really uh, doing that well. 
Um, so overall, I, I think uh, it'll be fair to call uh, the economy, certainly over the last few years, uh, stagnant. Chairman of the Creighton Group, Dr. Larry Taylor, bringing another angle to the conference with a focus on tone at the bottom. He says corporations should look at the bottom of the organization for more information. People at the bottom know more about the problems of the corporation than the top. So we try and go down to the bottom and interview and talk to people and get their views, not only just in the corporations, but also in society in general because the board directors sometimes are ex excluded so they don't get that kind of information from their employees or from the public in general. Megan Shepard, CNS Network News. Thank you, Megan. Well, as the countdown continues to the June 7th gender equality referendum, the committee charged with convincing Bahamians to vote yes is on a mission to ensure that the four proposed bills are clearly understood. Sabrina Brown reports. Co-chair of the Say Yes campaign, Lady Wilson, says the upcoming referendum is not to bring about gender neutrality, but rather gender equality, so that Bahamian men and women can have the same rights under the law. But there is particular concern about Bill No. 2, which seeks to enable a Bahamian woman who marries a foreign man to secure for him the same access to Bahamian citizenship as enjoyed by Bahamian men. Lady Wilson seeks to clarify that proposed amendment. I would like to emphasize that this bill would not make citizenship automatic. Anything but. There is nothing easy, quick, or convenient about becoming a Bahamian citizen. The process typically takes more than 10 years years. And it involves interviews, it involves inspections to ensure that the marriage is legit. She says there are laws in place to ensure that Bahamians do not become victims of fraudulent marriages. As of 2015, it is now a criminal act under the Fraudulent Marriages Act to participate in a fraudulent marriage. It is punishable by fine, and it's punishable by time in prison. Thus, Amendment 2 is designed only to help real Bahamian families. Bill number four is also a bone of contention for many Bahamians. This amendment will make it unconstitutional to discriminate based on whether one is male or female. Lady Wilson says, under the Matrimonial Causes Act, marriage must be between a man and a woman, and this amendment will not change that. By this amendment, what we are going to do is define what we mean by sex so that no judge sitting anywhere or no one who is looking at our laws can be confused as to what we mean when we say equal rights for or no discrimination on the basis of sex. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. In news from the crime beat, a 21-year-old female of Grand Key was arrested for possession of dangerous drugs with the intent to supply. Reports are that officers of Operation Turf Sweep, acting on information, went to the Grand Bahama Highway in the area of the Grand Key boat dock, where officers discovered a quantity of suspected marijuana and cocaine in a suitcase. The female was taken into custody. Officers of Operation Turf Sweep making another big discovery. Officers went to an area off Grand Bahama Highway and discovered in bushes a backpack containing one gray and black .380 pistol with 1.380 ammunition and 1.357 revolver with 3.357 ammunition. Now they were all collected and secured by police. No arrests were made. Police are currently investigating. Stay with us, there is more news right after this. 